That's a fantastic starting point because um, you'll do well at university, I think, in an area that you actually enjoy studying in. And happily, after university, you can do what you love and get paid for it too. There have been a number of uh, recent reports that have reached a similar conclusion that science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, known collectively by their acronym STEM, are critical to our economy and our future prosperity. Around the world, a science degree is a respected qualification and employers are more than ever looking to recruit graduates with STEM skills. You'll be aware that science and technology have already had a massive impact on careers and the pace of change is increasing. The digital revolution has eliminated whole industries and careers and created others. The best way to avoid being caught out by this wave of change is to be a part of it, to understand it to take advantage of developments in technology. That way you won't find yourself in a career that isn't needed any longer or that is better done by robots. The point here is that a science degree gives you generalizable skills. It helps to future-proof your career. It gives you skills like problem solving, analytical thinking, evidence-based decision making, the ability to work independently or in a team as part of a team and come up with creative solutions. These skills, of course, are relevant not only to jobs that exist today, but those that will exist in the future. And if you're interested in a particular profession, you don't have to choose between that and science. You can do both in a dual degree. Science combines very well with degrees in areas like law, uh, business, uh, and, um, and engineering, uh, and it will help give you an edge in getting jobs in those areas. In fact, as scientists, we tend to think that scientific training will enhance decision making in all aspects of, uh, of your life, not just your work. In a world full of climate skeptics and anti-vaxxers and fake news, we'd rather like to improve the overall scientific literacy uh, of the whole population. To tell you more about the faculty and the courses you, you can study here, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Gavin Edwards. Gavin's our Associate Dean uh, for Academic Programs, and uh, he works with our students on a daily basis. So he's ideally placed to tell you everything you need to know about studying at University. Over to you, Gavin. Thanks very much, Peter. Um, I'll wander up and down and I'll use this, although one of my great skills is actually bellowing to a large audience. But now, uh, I'm told I need to use it because I think they're recording. Hello and welcome everyone. And in welcome you are welcoming you all here today, I'd like to acknowledge the Bedigal people who are the traditional custodians of the lands where we are. And I'd like to also acknowledge their elders past and present. So hi and welcome to science. Why would you want to do science at UNSW? Well, lots of pretty pictures there. We are a big place. By being a big place and by being a top place, we attract prestige. And we've had people like Jane Goodall, um, Stephen Hawking, not quite here, but sort of here, involved <laughs> with the university over the past few years. We have great staff. We have people like Emma Johnson, who is our current dean, um, a range of people like Michelle Simmons studying uh, quantum computing, people in the Climate Change Research Centre, Richard Kingsford from the Ecosystem Science area, lots of people doing really interesting stuff. Science has been a second of great career prospects. We're here. 61,000 students, 6,000 of them doing science. And size does matter. And lastly, we have great facilities. So overall, it sounds like a boat wiggle. As you can see by this line, 
not just the amount of research funding that we attract from government bodies, which is a loss, but the fact that we have links internationally and we attract funding such as the Torch Innovation Precinct, which is a joint initiative for UNSW and China to the extent of 10 million dollars. Lots of people want to come here, as you may realise, the ATAR is a competitive entry system. To get into science, we have the top ATAR in New South Wales. Yes, I am banging the drum a bit. <laughs> we also have great facilities and we are investing in even more new facilities. As you wander around the campus, you will see that bits of it are a bit like a building site. And while well, we apologise for that, equally we don't apologise for it. Because the best way that you can learn is to learn in some of the best and newest and most modern facilities. So we are spending what might look like huge sums of money. We're actually only spending about a million dollars a day on new infrastructure across the university. And that's infrastructure not just for research, but for teaching, but also for accommodation for people who might want to come and live on campus. I mentioned that we're good, and I mentioned that we are considered to be good. And if you look at ranking systems, and different people like different ranking systems, you will see that we are consistently ranked very highly, and certainly material science and engineering, maths and stats and psychology are ranked number one in Australia. I've already mentioned staff at UNSW. We are amongst the best in our research areas, and we are very, very diverse. From things like DNA technology, quantum computing, wildlife management, looking after ecosystems, river management, cosmology, medicinal chemistry, which is new drug development, psychology, maths and stats, data science, lots and lots of new areas. We're not just good, we're also broad. Science is a very broad church, and at UNSW, we encompass a whole lot of areas that you would think about. So if I asked you to think about science, you'd say, yeah, maths, chemistry, biology, physics, but you might not think about optometry, you might not think about psychology, you might not think about material science, you might not think about aviation. These are all parts of our very broad faculty of science here at UNSW. If you want to come and study here, and I certainly hope you do, we have lots and lots of degree options. I know that some universities have gone down the path of reducing their number of degrees. We don't want to do that because we want to offer you choice. If you want to do a broad degree, we have degrees like the Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Advanced Science, Bachelor of Life Sciences and Science International. And they give you breadth, they give you plenty of options to take different majors in different areas. We have another degree that I quite like, the Bachelor of Science and Business. At its heart it's a science degree, so it's a BSc, but it also has tacked onto it a third of the degree as a business module to give you a few key skills in the business field. So, some business law, some ethics, maybe accounting, management, marketing, economics. Not the sort of bread that you would get in the Bachelor of Commerce, but just a taste of business. Because what we recognise, we recognise that you won't spend your entire lives wearing white lab coats. You will progress in your careers from maybe a bench scientist through to management. And it gives you some of the background skills you may need. We also have degrees like MedSci and Biotech, so Bachelor of Medical Science looks at things like anatomy, pathology, pharmacology, <laughs> physiology. The Bachelor of Biotechnology, as the name says, looks at new technological ways to use biology and molecular biology to do interesting things um, with substances. We have the Bachelor of Advanced Mathematics, which Frankly, it does exactly what it says it's going to do on the label. It's for people who love maths, pure applied, pure applied or statistics. And we have another new degree that I'm really excited about, the Bachelor of Data Science and Decisions. This is actually a joint effort between the business school, the Faculty of Engineering, the School of Computer Science and Engineering, 
and our school of maths and stats and science. Data is really important. Big data is one of the major things that's going to be a huge employer into the future. And even though the degree's only been going for one year, we've already seen huge interest in it. We also have a nanoscience degree in nanotechnology, looking at making very, very small functional materials and functional machines. We have a Bachelor of Medicinal Chemistry. It's not pharmacy. It's actually about the design of new drugs and taking them from the concept stage through to the market. And you can even do a Bachelor of Engineering in the Faculty of Science. We have a Bachelor of Engineering in Material Science and Engineering. We have a Bachelor of Environmental Management. And while all of these degrees are science, they are nuanced and they are very carefully structured to give you different experiences. Lots of unis look at environmental science. And it's all very well in mind when you go out and study science. But unless you manage it properly, there will be nothing to hand on, nothing worthwhile to hand on to future generations. Our School of Biological Earth and Environmental Science has some of the top environmental managers in Australia. And they are the sort of people who will be teaching you in this degree. I mentioned we have a School of Aviation. Yes, we can teach you how to fly a plane. We actually have our own planes. And we can teach you, if you don't want to learn how to fly a plane, we can teach you how to run an airline. So there are two options here, aviation flying and aviation management. We have other professional degrees, so the Bachelor of Vision Science and the Master of Clinical Optometry. Again, as the name suggests, it's a professional degree, it's a five-year program, and it leads to a qualification that will set you up to become an optometrist. And last, but definitely not least, we have a number of different roads into psychology. One of which is our premium Bachelor of Psychology honours. But equally, you can study psychology as part of a number of other degrees. Again, it is what it says, it's about psychology, but one of the interesting things that people don't realise is psychology is part of lots and lots and lots of other things. I should ask Peter, since he comes from the School of Psychology, what sort of interesting things you can do with psychology, but things like human resources, things like marketing, are just two things that involve a lot of psychology. A lot of the psychology is a degree can give you skills for those professions. I don't know about you, but it actually scares me. Lots of people in marketing actually have degrees in psychology. They know how your brain works, how your mind works, and they know how to get inside and sell you stuff. <laughs> the other thing you can do is you can combine your degrees with other degrees. We have a lot of dual degree options here at UNSW. So you can take a Bachelor of Science, and while you're here, you can also do a BA, or a BAMCOM, or a Bachelor of Engineering, or a Bachelor of Music. There are lots and lots of options. What's the advantage? Well, it obviously gives you a broader skill set. It may well make you a lot more employable when you get out. But simply, by doing the two degrees at once, there's a little trick that we do in terms of counting the courses you do, or the subject you do, that means it doesn't take as long. So a Bachelor of Arts will take you three years. A Bachelor of Science will take you three years. Do them together as a dual degree combination, it will only take you four years. So there's a discount for doing them as a dual degree combination. I mentioned at the outset that as a university, we are out of looking and we have um, research funding, for example, from a range of international partners. But it's not just about getting money from overseas, it's about our links with overseas. Science as a profession can take you anywhere, but equally, science can take you anywhere while you're here, or almost anywhere. We have lots of options. We have over 200 partner institutions where you can do a semester or two of exchange as a part of your degree. In other words, you can go live in another country, study in another country, and you get credit for those subjects when you come back to UNSW. 
And this is a slide that will make your eyes spin as the little icons pop up. We have lots and lots of links with industry partners. And as a part of the degree, we encourage you to take the internships, to take the work placements. Look at getting involved with industry, with industry partners, because work integrated learning or work placements are the sorts of things that, again, will enhance your employability when you finally graduate. How do you get in? Well, apart from just walking in to get your degree, you obviously need to come in through your app. I've mentioned lots and lots of different degree programs, and in fact, we have lots of entry points across the ATAR range, from about 80 up to around 98. So some have very high ATAR entry points, and some are down around 80. We also have bonus points. So, based on the subjects that you've chosen in HSC, and based on the results that you get, so whether you get band four, five, or six, you may be eligible for up to five bonus points towards your entry. I can't give you a more comprehensive picture because it does actually depend on the program you want to go into. So you may get more points in one than another. Finally, scholarships. We have lots and lots of scholarship options available. And they're not just for the very, very top students. They're not just for students who get ATARs of 99 point a squillion. They are for all sorts of different reasons. You will find that there are some scholarships that are, in, that are aimed, for example, at rural students. There are some that are aimed at Indigenous students. There are lots and lots of different scholarships available. And it's a little known fact that unless you have a, unless you're actually in the game, you won't get off of one. And by that I mean there are lots and lots of high achieving students who don't get scholarships because they don't apply. So it's one of those perverse things that we don't if you don't get an ATAR of 99.95, that doesn't mean you won't be eligible for a scholarship because there are lots of students up that band who don't apply. So have a go. Look on our scholarships website, put the applications in. You've got nothing to lose. Now, I would like to hand over to Kirsten and James, two of our students, who are going to tell us a little bit about, we'll just flash back and forth, a little bit about their time at the NSW and what a fabulous time they've had here. <laughs> I will, yeah, go and play with the mic. Hi everyone, so we both do science degrees here at UNSW and I'm going to introduce you to an undergraduate degree because that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, but it's not just all about doing classes, like it's lots of fun, like for example up here we have our UNSW FISSOC that we're both a part of, we're actually one of the executive members of the society and it opens up a lot of doors for you to actually go up and have fun and meet people. By doing things like this, I, in my first year, I actually met someone who I went to, high, I went to primary school with, and he came along and he asked me out on a date <laughs> to go to Sydney Observatory. It's not this guy over here. It's someone else who didn't work out. But anyway, I went to Sydney Observatory with this person. I went to Sydney Observatory with this person, and on the tour, I got talking with the tour guide, and he was like, you know what, you should apply for a job here. I'm like, all right. Now I've worked there for two years. So going out and going to all these different opportunities and going out and meeting new people, meeting people that you will be very much similar to, you have the same mindset, you're going to do these things, and it's this sort of network of people that brings you out to do lots of different things. With all the people that I've met, even just in your society executive team, just looking at the emails, Someone sent an email to our society and was like, yo, can we have you guys on ABC News? And we're like, yeah, sure, who do you want? Like, you can do it. All right, cool, I'll do it. <laughs> so you can go out and you can start being on things like you can go to, to NASA. I went to NASA, lots of fun, would recommend it. And just go out and say yes to things. That's why my experience here at UNSW has been so great. There are so many opportunities that you just have to go out and just say yes. Just go, go ahead, just go and do it. 
And maybe one day you can be on national Japanese television like I will in a few days. <laughs> I think something that Kirsten forgot to mention is that picture up in the top left uh, was on the front page of Sydney Morning Herald a couple of months ago for the Australia Day, um, a week after the Australia Day address by Michelle Simmons, who's uh, the director of the Quantum Computing Centre here. Uh, my experience has been very similar to Kirsten. I do physics, I did mathematics too. Um, I'm currently in my honours year. Um, I finished off my HSC in 2012, I was sitting in the exact same audience here. No, I have to say, Gavin, you're aging gracefully for the past five years. <laughs> so, um, and so I only have, well, six, six hours of lectures left, four assignments, three exams, and one thesis to write. I'm not counting, though. <laughs> the important thing here is that the question has to be, is honours right for me? And that's something where, if I'm sitting, sitting in your shoes, I had no idea. That's three, four years down the track, and honestly, I have to say yes. It changes person to person, but it does give you the freedom to pick a project and then take it where you want. Currently, I'm looking at how stars form, and we hope to find in this how complex molecules can arise, eventually finding proteins, amino acids, and hopefully sugars, and finally asking, answering the question, where did we come from and how did life begin? But I didn't take the project because of that. I took the project because it had lots of data. As Gavin said earlier, data is growing. Every year, new telescopes are being developed and we're producing more and more data. And techniques need to be reducing this data on the fly. And a little fact is it's now becoming more economical to just look at the object again and pay to store the data. For me, team, putting a project together, taking it from start to finish, in, uh, finish, I've been looking into different fields and seeing the ideas they have. And for me, it's purely defined by what I want to do and where the general direction of the project goes. So if you enjoy career, if you enjoy asking tough questions that no one has ever thought of before, if you like to answer those as well, the science, the honest way that it's perfect for you. It has been perfect for me. So I think we'll hand over to Dr. Gavin. Thank you. Was it this one? It was this one. Thanks very much, Kirsten and James. So, what I learned from that was UNSW is a great dating site. <laughs> and I'm growing old gracefully. <laughs> Thank you, Hope. Okay, so we're just about finished. There's lots on today for science. Um, if you've got any questions, I'll be hanging around for a little bit. You can come up and ask me. Alternatively, you know to head up the hill, there's the advising centre for any more specific questions. There's lots happening on the lawn outside. If you want to go and see people with um, various displays from various of our science schools. There are sort of students and experts to talk to there. The Mars rover is out there. Um, apart from that, thank you all, and I hope to see you all here in the future studying science, whether it be chemistry, which I'm from, or one of the other disciplines. Thank you, everyone.